LSD is really very different. Uh, if, it, when, when LSD was first given to drug addicts and they were asked whether they liked the drug, they said no, they didn't like the drug. I don't think anybody uses cocaine or heroin to expand their consciousness, but people will take LSD and, and the other hallucinogens as part of a, a journey uh, of self-discovery, and that's very different. LSD has an effect on the nation that no other drug has ever had. The experience of LSD shapes art and music with images and sounds derived from the way it alters the brain's perceptions. More than a drug, it is a symbol, an emblem of a generation that doesn't trust anyone over 30. LSD is the drug in sex, drugs, and rock and roll. There was a revolt, you know, the, you might call it the bohemianization of, of young people. LSD, though perfectly legal, will soon be banned. That will happen as the drug is linked to the rebellious behavior of youth in the 60s. We had the most potent psychoactive drug on the planet being directly marketed to our youth, um, and they were very interested in it. And the results of their taking it were causing a disintegrating effect in society. But its journey to an outlawed substance will get a push from another drug and a totally different drug user. Hooked illegal drugs and how they got that way will return in a moment. Every illicit drug starts off perfectly legal, freely used, and widely accepted. Many are even hailed at their discovery as medicinal miracles. LSD is no exception. When it is introduced to pop culture in the 60s, it is everywhere and readily available. And LSD had even been advertised in the backs of magazines. You could buy it through the mail. And many famous people did and, and took it in the early years. The more LSD is used, the more its dangers emerge. But while the physiological effects are quite unspectacular, the effects on the mind are explosively disruptive. Reaction to the drug is completely unpredictable. It can be the hoped-for heaven or a hell full of horror. And there are The drug leaves its mark in phrases that become a part of the language of the day. Bummer, flashback, and bad trip. There is no sure antidote for a bad trip. Although People, uh, when their states of consciousness are altered, have a false sense of reality. Some people feel they are omnipotent. Some people feel they can fly. Some people are so disconnected, uh, may engage in activities they would normally not engage with and be totally embarrassed or upset once they came back to their senses. Unfortunately, these dreamy, psychedelic trips are very often one way. They weren't ready for it. They didn't understand what was happening to their mind. Post-LSD reaction is a very depressing reaction. People brain chemistry is so used up that they go into a funk, they go into tremendous morose feelings, and, and they can become suicidal. LSD's potential for personal harm makes headlines. Ironically, the coverage about its dangers, intended to deter its use, actually encourages it, spurring the epidemic. The media began to have big scare campaigns against these drugs, and the scare campaigns got kids interested in the drugs, and they began taking them. The big rise in drug use among kids followed the media campaigns rather than preceded it. Anti-LSD educational films begin to appear nationwide. Transportation to the fantastic and frightening territory of inner space, courtesy of LSD-25. We are about to take you into the world of the LSD user, a world that to him is real, 
yet as terrifying and unreal as anything ever imagined. We call his trip of terror to fly a giant bird. LSD's dangers, whether disseminated as scary hyperbole or scientific fact, weigh heavily in the national debate about whether or not to ban it. To lawmakers on Capitol Hill, there is a perceived link between LSD and social anarchy, which threatens the very fabric of society, making its use as dangerous to the country as heroin or opium. They see it as a catalyst or a simple-minded, well, if we keep marijuana and psychedelic drugs out of circulation, we'll never have that kind of trouble again. Before things settle down, 400 If we get into a Vietnam War, there won't be lots of people out there protesting. If we, uh, you know, the civil rights movement, all the things that, uh, the, the free speech movement, I think all those things uh, were connected with marijuana and psychedelics. And of course, it's not causal, but I think in the minds of a lot of these people, that's, that's what made the difference here. And at Kent State in Ohio, four students are killed. The turmoil of the 60s connects LSD to radicals and other subversives. Soon, groups associated with LSD and the drug itself become demonized, a prerequisite for the criminalization of drugs throughout history. The mob's mood, unruly. The next step in LSD's transformation into an illegal drug is the election of Richard Nixon, America's law and order president. President Richard Nixon saw a political opportunity to attack the counterculture uh, kids whose signature was often uh, smoking marijuana and doing drugs. And uh, these uh, people were, were really putting a lot of pressure on Nixon and, and the war. And the country was divided. An American flag is burned at the height of the demonstration. Politically, Nixon needs to quiet the voices of protest that are rocking the nation. Speaking out against the government is legal. Public demonstrations are legal. Recreational drug use is not. Meanwhile, the nation's top cop, FBI Chief J. Edgar Hoover, sends an official memo stating, since the use of marijuana and other narcotics is widespread among members of the new left, you should be alert to opportunities to have them arrested by local authorities on drug charges. In a time of grave social upheaval, the president declares a war on drugs. We must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States, the problem of dangerous drugs. Nixon begins by throwing out the old system of taxing drugs out of existence, making them unattainable to most users. Prior to that, a drug was illegal when you passed a specific law against it, like the Marijuana Tax Act, uh, the Harrison Act, uh, national prohibition. But the 1970 Comprehensive Drug Abuse Act introduced scheduling. Scheduling categorizes drugs by their perceived danger versus their proven or perceived medical benefits. Schedule one drugs are drugs that are thought to have no legitimate medical value and therefore are absolutely prohibited except in rare cases of research. Schedule one, they put uh, heroin and strangely enough, marijuana, LSD, number of other drugs. <laughs> LSD fills a generation's prescription for social change. That relationship will also affect how all drugs from that point on are made illegal. You can move a drug from one schedule to another. You see how much easier that is than uh, having to pass a new law every time you change your mind about something. I can well understand that legislators would want to include LSD in the class of narcotics, basically, saying that it should be made illegal in the same way that addictive drugs such as 
um, heroin uh, and other drugs would be illegal. Actually, it's not the same kind of drug, but it was producing a similar destructive social effect. Years later, ecstasy is put on Schedule 1, limiting any potential research on the drug. The drugs of a rebellious generation are now under federal jurisdiction, just like deadly narcotics. With the Controlled Substance Act, Congress will never have to pass a law to ban a drug again. The president's plan begins to make progress toward reality. Drug arrests are doubled. Three times as much heroin is seized. Nixon's war on drugs removes regulation from the democratic process. That task is now up to the Food and Drug Administration. Meanwhile, Nixon creates the Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA, whose yearly budget increases over 30 years to nearly 18 billion dollars. With that money, the DEA wages but a